Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pallet of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormbringer magazine. Now as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and drop me a comment down below. I love hearing back from you guys and it goes a massive way to helping out the channel too. Now, this week we're on issue 13 of Stormbringer magazine and it is a paint issue in all honesty, uh, but... You know, pretty de two pretty decent colours. So first off, we have Mephiston Red. It's fairly decent. It's a nice, decent shade of red. Um, it'll do you right. I personally don't use a lot of it, so I have plenty around. Um, so, you know, I just have a surplus pot now, because why not? The other colour we get is Wraithbone. Now, Wraithbone I do use a lot of. It's a very, very good ivory colour. Um, perfect for schools. Perfect for that skull on the back of uh, Swamp Caller Shaman um, and some of the other skulls that are dotted around on bases and stuff like that. So very, very handy to have, uh, especially for things like tabards as well that the Stormcast Eternals have. So it's uh, going to come in handy. And yeah, it's pretty decent. The thing with it being a kind of pale shade though, it does separate very easily. So make sure you stir it up very, very well or shake it very, very vigorously. Um, to get it all to combine if you don't in all honesty your paint experience with painting with it is going to be terrible so make sure you're giving it a very very good vigorous shake before you start using it into this week's issue we go though first off we're greeted by monsters of the sea so darker than a cave colder than a mountain top more full of predatory life than the worst jungle that's the sea for you only foolish captains say that it's safe that their hulls of wood and steel are enough to hold back the terrors of the deep oceans. Wise captains don't say much, and in fact most captains die before they've lived long enough to get wise. So, the sea obviously in Gur in particular is very, very deadly. There are lots of monsters within it and this page is going to give us a quite a bit of detail on some of them. So, first off we have Alapexes. So, Finding an Alapex is easy. A drop of blood in the water will call every one of them for leagues around. A single Alapex is fast, strong and capable of halving an ogre with a single bite. Their skin is rough and tough and enough to uh, rub flesh down to the bone if you're not careful. Keeping your distance is key to surviving an encounter with an Alapex. They move at blinding speed and will shred you even before you've tried to lift your harpoon arm to strike back. So, the Alapexes are one of the many kind of shark-like creatures. It is, obviously, because it's a shark, they're pretty cool, they're pretty fast, and pretty damn lethal. Now, this is one of the reasons why the Eidonith Deepkin like to utilise them in their arsenal of uh, random sea creatures. So they have these giant seahorses, they have alapexes, and they also have leviadons. So, a leviadon is one of the heavily armoured creatures in the ocean. Every one of these beasts is terrifyingly fast when swimming, covered in armour plates and capable of crunching through steel hull as if it were just matchwood. Uh, unless you've got a Dwardian made artill artillery, your best shot at bringing down one of these beasts is stabbing it in the throat as it swallows you. You won't live, but there's a chance you might, mates might, uh, get the chance of, to avenge you, or at least escape with their lives. So, another massive creature that the Eidonith Deepkin like to use. These ones are obviously big massive turtles with super huge teeth, and uh, yeah, they're nuts. They're pretty cool, uh, they're absolutely fantastic units, and the minis for... The Leviadons, the Alapexes, the other cre sea creatures that the Eidonith Deep King can use are really cool. And I must admit, the Leviadon, Leviadon is one of the best ones out there. Then we get information about the War Hydras. So the seafaring knights of the Order Serpentis say that War Hydras can be tamed. Of course, people say that the Order of Serpentis hunt humans who wander into their coasts, fortresses for fun. So I wouldn't trust a tame War Hydra further than I could throw one. Even if you get past the fiery breath, slashing talons and biting heads, these creatures can regenerate anything short of a lethal injury. If you have to fight one of these beasts, strike hard and fast. 
So War Hydras have been around for a long, long time. They were in uh, Warhammer Fantasy battles and st such like. And um, yeah, they're always been pretty cool, pretty gnarly and look very different. And obviously being a Hydra, if you follow uh, kind of like Greek mythology and stuff like that as well, the Hydra is mentioned in there. And the Hydra, if you chop off one head, two can grow back in space and such like. So um, yeah, they're nuts. They're pretty cool though. So really, really good stuff. And then we move on, we get a story as well. Our first major story, Spearhead. The duty of a Stormcast Eternal is unending. Each of these warriors is sworn to an eternity of war, living lifetime after lifetime as champions of the mortal realms. As human settlers from the city of Skyheld venture into the wide wilds of the realm of beasts, the Stormcast Eternals are sent into battle once more against a deadly enemy. So, our first bit of fiction from within the pages of this magazine, and it's a pretty decent one. Stormcast Eternals going up against our cruel boys, and uh, you know the new Oryx foes. Being Oryx uh, like to be a bit of a pain in the backside, for, especially for Stormcast Eternals. And it's a pretty decent little story, in all honesty. I genuinely kind of like it. I like pretty much all Age of Sigma fiction myself. Um, if you want some really cool Age of Sigma fiction. Um, the Dominion book for the third, essentially third edition of good old um, Warhammer Age of Sigma is really, really good. It's definitely worth having a read and you kind of get where they're getting going with Stormbringers and stuff like that. And the Dawnbringer Crusades and such like gives you loads and loads of information about it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So definitely worth a read if you get a chance to. But otherwise the story is pretty good it is a to be continued so there will be at least one more part uh, and i'm kind of looking forward to it because i do as i say the story is good it's good fun so definitely worth having to read through and then we're starting to get information about the realms themselves so this is all about kind of guiding you in your how your battlefield works and how kind of potent spells can be and how kind of strong creatures can be and such like and the pitfalls and different kind of rule sets that different realms have the magazine is going to walk you through them over time so first off we're going to start with Gur, because no two corners of a realm of beasts are alike nor are any free from the ravages of war the stormcast eternals and cruel boys can be found struggling for supremacy across Gur. With these tables, you'll be able to find out where in Gur your armies are fighting and what they are fighting for. So this is to define your kind of campaign and what you're actually going for, your objectives for battles and such like. So D6s, it's a case of just roll through and you can get your kind of setting and your region traits. And then you can go for your actual locations as well. So, and obviously that map gives you an idea of what the, is in each location and what part of each location you're in. So definitely worth having a try of. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good fun. But so it'll be really good fun for you. So definitely worth having a go at. And then you get your how to paint guide. Obviously your how to paint guide, following it is pretty easy. The thing that this suggests as well is actually how I personally, I paint up most of my models. Um, it's telling you to remove the shields from the models. I personally, because I paint them all in one go and not following the magazine uh, due to having you know, an absolute shed load of paints, um, I paint the shields up before I actually attach them to them, the good old models anyway, so it makes it a lot easier in the long run, so definitely worth a go at, but otherwise, this is going to teach you how to utilise Wraithbone and the Fist and Red to uh, pretty good qualities before using any washes and any edge highlights and such like. So definitely worth a crack and keep an eye on it. Obviously brush control is key here as well. So you got a lot of fine detail to utilize and uh, you'll be absolutely fine though. Following the guide is pretty good and pretty worthwhile. So have a crack at it and I'm sure you'll do absolutely fine. So good, good stuff there. Once you've done that, obviously you can move on to your Stormcast Eternals and using your Mephiston Red on them, using Wraithbone on them. So this is obviously for using for things like scrolls and parchments and parts of banners and such like. Um, it works very, very well. So definitely worth having a nosy at, definitely worth following as well to kind of give you some idea. If you're unaware and kind of unsure 
of how exactly to paint up your good old Stormcast Eternals, it's definitely worth having a nosy through because it's pretty handy. And then we get our playthrough for the week. We're on part 13, obviously, uh, and it's all about deployment and new rules for deployment. We're still using that circle side of the battle mat, um, which is a really pretty decent way of teaching us how to play and go with it and how to utilize movement and deployment and once you're done you'll have good fun we also get a pull out section for this week's magazine as well all about the armies of order and this is part two essentially of it so there are obviously loads of different armies within the forces of order and the grand lines of order and we get a lovely lovely picture there of the cities of Sigma with some Stormcast Eternals, we have some cities of Sigma humans up there, we have some Dwardin. Pretty cool. I like seeing stuff like that, it's always really good fun, and you get to see some really cool minis at the same time. Then we get our Fire Slayers, we've got good old um, Battle Mage leading an alliance of Free Guild and Lumineth, we have the Ideneth Deepkin, who are raiders and probably the weirdest ones of the forces of order um, you also find out about arcane technology they are guardians of realms of course and on the other page they are allies within the shadows so some of them do have assassins and they also have monsters and spirits that fight on their side including in the shape of the silver neff and such like so pretty cool if you want to know more about the armies of order definitely worth having a good nosy through them pages because it's pretty cool then, finally, next week, we get our Man Skewer Bolt Boys from the Auric Cruel Boy range. Uh, we find out information about the Ogle Moor Tribes, about the allies for the Stormcast Eternals and such like as well. And, uh, yeah, it would be pretty decent. It's not going to be good. Then, issue 15, Stormcast Prey Tours, which are pretty cool. So we've already had a Prey Tour Prime, um, which mine is still not painted. Um... But yeah, we get the Praetor, so obviously Praetor Prime is going to be the one that commands them. Uh, and the Praetors follow in their wake and uh, smash stuff up. So really cool, carrying these big massive glaive-like hellbirds, which are pretty gnarly, in all honesty. Uh, and we also get information about the Cities of Sigma and keyword abilities. So keyword abilities are pretty important to your rules if you're following the major rules importantly. But otherwise, that's it. So, thank you very, very much for watching, and I shall see you sometime soon. Bye-bye now.